Welcome to today's masterclass, The Seven Basic Elements of Memoir Writing. This is a beginning writer's brief overview of what you need to know to write an interesting and effective memoir. Most new writers throw themselves into the experience and write sometimes at a feverish pitch. They will write a number of pages, chapters, and whole parts of their memoir, and then it will occur to them that they really don't know how to write. What is it that they could do to make their book more interesting, more effective? Well, that's the time to turn to the basic elements of memoir writing. In this uh, teleclass, in this video uh, teleclass, um, I am going to overview the seven basic elements of memoir writing. But before I do so, I want to say that today's masterclass is brought to you by The Memorable Story, Write Your First Memoir Draft. The Memorable Story is a long distance memoir writing program that will guide you through the completion of your memoir. Details of the program can be accessed in the description. If you are a new writer, not really aware of writing elements, this is a tremendous uh, opportunity for you get the memorable story, write your first memoir um, draft. It was Robert Louis Stevenson, the Scottish writer, who offered that all stories need to have these three elements of character, action, and setting. While he was speaking of fiction, this advice is good for our memoir writing. We will start with these elements, but they aren't enough. I will add some more. Um, stories must entertain. They need to include, to do so, they need to include well-developed characters. Sometimes it is difficult for writers, new writers, to accept that the characters of their memoirs themselves as uh, children, their mothers, their fathers, their grandparents, their brothers and sisters, are characters. They'll say, oh, but these are real people. These are the people that I knew. Yes, they are. And once they get on the page, they become the characters of your memoir. And as such, they have to be crafted. They have to be crafted with careful details. Elsewhere in this channel, I have a whole video on how to craft better characters. But for right now, let's just say that you're gonna wrap your attention around the idea that the people in your life are characters in your story. Another element that is geared to keeping the reader reading is the action or the plot of your story. This is sometimes difficult also for people to accept that a memoir has to have some sort of action, some sort of plot line. Will I or will I not get that scholarship? Will I or will I not marry these, this person? These are actions. These are plots. Something is going to happen. You're not sure what is going to happen. So you introduce that into your story. You're thrusting into the future, which you don't know whether it will happen or not, and that is plot. Again, elsewhere on this channel, I have a full video on how to fix your plot. Stories, in addition to character and action, must also have a setting. The setting has two aspects to it. On the first hand, there is the, the physical aspect of setting. This story takes place in Hartford, Connecticut. This story takes place in Denver, Colorado. So that's the physical setting. It takes place in an apartment, in a house. It takes place in a park, uh, someplace, in a school. That's the physical setting. These, have, these settings have to be described in detail so that they are particularized. So if I grew up in a suburb of New Jersey, in New Jersey, it's not the same thing as if I grew up in a ranch in Alberta. And our setting has to really particularize where it is that the story is taking place. But there is another setting, and that setting is an abstract, intangible setting. It is a setting of culture, of religion, of socioeconomic background, of language. Um, this setting is no less real than the physical setting, and you have to exploit it. If I grew up in, a, um, in an African-American uh, Harlem, uh, certainly 
the culture that I was in was very different from if uh, I grew up in a, um, a Yankee uh, family in the Yankee community in northern Vermont. Um, so your setting has to take into account the particularities of your story. These three elements, character, action, and setting, are not enough, however, to really help, to really uh, make your story a success. Story need enticing dramatic development that includes episodes that build on each other. We refer to that in action. Actions are made of episodes. And the building block of an action is an episode. So that might be going swimming or taking the bus to school or it may be uh, experiencing the death of your pet dog. Uh, whatever it is, it isn't enough in itself. It's only part of a story. But you need to be thinking in terms of including episodes, of developing episodes. The episodes build on each other by leading to a climax and then to a turning point. A climax is the point in the story where there is so much tension that something has to be resolved. You, you're working someplace, you're working at a job, uh, there's a lot of tension between you and your supervisor, your boss, your manager. Uh, you have tried your best, the boss, the manager is just coming on to you, you're developing an ulcer, you hate to go to work, so it's building up. The climax is one day you realize that your life can have some other texture to it, some other um, environment, and you decide that you're not going to work there anymore, and boom, you quit. So that would be your climax. A story can have many climaxes, um, like the work climax could be a small climax leading to the character of the story, which inevitably would be you, the leading to the character of the story deciding to dramatically change his life, for instance. Or if this were a divorce story, it would lead to that moment. The climax would be the moment when the spouse realizes that he or she can't continue in this relationship. And then there is a turning point. A turning point is when that person resolves, yes, I need to leave this marriage. I need to leave this job. Stories help us to rehearse life and to guide our decisions. Authors need to help this along by offering their philosophy of life. This is called a theme. A theme is how you view life, is how you interpret life. It can be as simple as life is hard or life, uh, uh, the winners in life are those who persevere and who have grit, who hang in there. It can be love conquers all. It can be a negative or a positive a theme. That's your point of view, your philosophy. By offering a theme, the author is expounding her point of view in life. Now, theme is the general philosophy. Point of view is the take. They're close, but a point of view um, is really more particular. It's less generalized. It's less intangible. The point of view is how I see things. Um, so you can see the point of you can write a memoir from a child's point of view. You can write a memoir from the adult's point of view. You could write a memoir from perhaps one of the characters. Uh, in the memoir, although that's not a very usual uh, way to do it. Point of view is really um, from where the story is being narrated. Very close to point of view is tone. Point of view establishes tone, but point of view also uh, is influenced by tone. Tone is the feeling that you introduce into your memoir. Now, let me give you a little example. Just say when you were a child, your mother abandoned the family or left the family, because abandoned or left are certainly tone words. Um, just say when you were nine, your mother left. Uh, she had fallen in love with uh, the mailman, and she and your father did not have a happy relationship. Your father was a cold man, and your mother was a very warm woman. And uh, so you write when I was nine, my mother found uh, love with a man 
who uh, just warmed to something in her. She had been cold and freezing in the environment that my father created for her. And she decided, knowing that my father was a good father but not a very supportive husband, she decided to leave us with him and to go off. So that's one tone that you've given to this story. You could have also given the tone my mother, when I was nine, like the shameless hussy that she was, preferred her own uh, pleasure to uh, taking care of her kids, and she abandoned us. You see how that is quite a different tone that you give to the story. With this tone and point of view, it is uh, really quite difficult to feel sympathy for the mother in this second instance, and I call her a hussy, as opposed to the first instance where my mother was lonely and she needed to warm her life up. I just want to just urge you to visit more of our videos. Uh, this has been a bird's eye overview of the basic elements of memoir writing. This master class was important, I believe, in understanding what makes a meaningful and interesting memoir. We have many other videos that expand on these seven basic elements of memoir writing. Please subscribe to the Better Memoir Writing Masterclass channel and send us a like and uh, leave a comment. We appreciate your support. Whatever you do today, write a bit on your memoir, and remember, inch by inch, it's a cinch to write a memoir. Yard by yard, it's hard.